There's a train of coming You don't need no baggage Just get on board All children of God are by destiny children of exploits Designed to thrive where others fail To conquer the obstacles others fear And to do the impossible But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you You'll need faith to make it a reality Faith Moments brought to you by Patrick Penu Ministries would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness and disease. It will enable you stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Penu. Understanding you or who you are in God. You must come to the place of understanding your very purpose and being in God on this earth. Because if you don't do that, then you will succumb to all kinds of challenges that comes to your way. And you may, listen, people have taken their lives before their time because they lack the understanding of who they were in God on this earth. In the book of Psalm 139, I want you to go with me now, if you please. David brings a vivid picture or a place or brings us to a place of understanding to know who we are in God. And therefore, we are to understand that God, who is the manufacturer of your being, has your life, your future, your destiny in his hands. Bible says that we have been inscribed in the palm of his hands. Are you listening? We have been inscribed in the palm of his hands. And therefore, we must understand Therefore, we must understand that the plan of God for us is plans of good and not evil. God has a very wonderful plan for you and I because he took his time to create you and brought you onto this earth for you to fulfill an assignment, a program of him that will bring it to his glory. Now, your life and my life on this earth is not an accident. You were not created accidentally. You were not made as an accident. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. Every part of you is to fulfill the plan of God on this earth. Are you listening? Every part of you, even the negative, the negative ones. We are always looking for the, you know, the, 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 the right ones and all that. I told somebody the other day, God created everything. And when I say everything, good, bad, ugly, whatever, God created them all. Now, you got to get to a level of understanding of, of who God is for you to know that. The man sits in the circles of the universe and he does what he please. Everything is at, at his disposal. Satan does not have everything at his disposal. God has to give him permission to do things. Are you listening? But that is for another time. But today, I want you to understand something with me as David is point, bringing a picture or pointing a picture or, or, or demonstrating to you and I who we are in God. And that is where I want you to turn your Bibles with me, if you please. We'll be reading from verse 1, Psalm 139. Oh Lord, David says, Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts are far off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot even attain it. Where can I go from your, from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I send into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even, even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you, you have formed my inward part. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret 
and skillfully wrath in the lowest part of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet un unformed. And in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned for me. When as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Let me just pause here. This is very, very interesting and this is powerful. And I want to dwell on the, the 13th verse to the 18th. For you have formed my inward part. For you have formed my inward part and have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrath in the lowest part of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance yet being unformed. And in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned for me. And as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more than the number of the sun. When I wake, when I wake, I am still with you. Powerful. When I wake, you know, listen, until you come to this place of understanding to know that you are not a mistake and you were not born on the wrong side of this earth, you will, you will begin to know that nothing, number one, nothing can touch you without God's permission. Are you listening? Nothing can touch you without God's permission. It doesn't matter how much they plot or how long they plot or how long your enemies gather to, to, to plan evil against you. It does not matter. It does not matter. You will fulfill the plan of God for your life on this earth. God created you in his image and in his likeness. And he has a good plan for creating you. Why do you think God creates, created you on this earth? God, listen, I said this and time again, God does not create mistakes. God does not create mistakes. You may be a mistake to somebody. I may be a mistake to somebody, but God, the manufacturer, the originator, the one who knows the number of your head on your head, he did not make a mistake in creating you. Are you listening to me? So you, you have to understand that you are on this earth to serve the purpose and plan of God. You only become a mistake when you begin to see yourself that you are, you are on this earth to fulfill or to meet the demands or to meet expectation of people. Amen? Because listen, it does not matter how, how much you do. Listen, people will not even be satisfied with whatever you do. Cut your head for, for them. They will want your leg. But here, David is pointing a picture to us that listen, we have been made very wonderfully and precious in the sight of God. God took his time to create you. Isn't that amazing that he made you so special that on the face of this earth, about what? The whole earth, you are the only person who has a, this fingerprint of yours. Nobody else has it. Isn't that wonderful? And so I want you to go through this life from this very day, from this very moment as you are listening to me, change your mindset, switch gears in your life to realize that God created you for a good purpose concerning what he wants to do on this earth. You are part of the earth fulfillment. You are part of what God expects that go, it happens in this, in this earth that he has created. And your life is not a mistake. Your life may be a mistake to your family or to anybody else, but your life is not a mistake. Don't let, don't let that expectation of people get you to just throw in the towel, give up or what have you. God has a good plan for you and you are here to fulfill it and you are here to make it happen and your destiny is in the hands only of God and nobody else. Amen? Are you listening? That is the kind of, that is the kind of reward, you know, you, you, you get for the investment of leaving everything to follow Jesus. And so it's not a bad investment. I asked you the other day, can your company 
tell you that you this is you going to can they tell you that they're going to give you 100% return on the job you do on the work you do for them they can say that they cannot they cannot but here in the kingdom work you are guaranteed a hundredfold return in this lifetime so ladies and gentlemen until you until you are declared dead buried down there and nobody can see you again you don't know what you're going to have are you listening you do not know what is in store for you just keep trusting him just keep believing him just keep obeying him believe his word that whatever he has said concerning you is yea and amen and it will come to pass it doesn't matter how long it takes it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it does not matter yes we you i know you would like to see it now yes i like to see it now too yes i like to have it right now but what of what what if you have it now finish it tomorrow and then what the rest of your life if you have 100 years to live on this earth, what are you going to do take your time let god take you through are you listening to me because he who has started a good work in you will bring it to an expected end. God has a good expectation of you. Listen, I'm telling you, you need to begin to see yourself as such. Else you are going to be consumed by the environment and what is going on and not be able to enjoy life. You need to enjoy everyday life based on the fact that God created you. He has a good plan for your life. He has a good plan for for your future he has a good plan for your destiny and therefore that is a guarantee a sure thing for you to begin to enjoy life everyday life don't 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 kill yourself don't stretch yourself i mean you work and work and work and work and work and by the end of the day you are so you are so tired you cannot by the time they give you the paycheck you are not even excited to even enjoy it listen enjoy god enjoy your life are you listening to me you need to enjoy everyday life. Find something to make yourself enjoyable. Let listen. Don't let people. Don't let the plans and the thoughts and the, and and whatever people think about you or they plan for you consume and, and be what you have to live your life by. I, listen. I tell people this. I refuse to live my life according to what you are thinking of me. It don't matter what you say about me. It don't matter. It does not matter. You ma Listen, don't waste your time. If you want to go ahead, go ahead. But it would not even affect my destiny or my future. It will not. I guarantee you in Jesus name that it will not. You be the highest demon on earth. Whatever your demonic enterprises or orchestrations and all that concerning me will not work. So stop wasting your time. Because I was, I was made in the image and in the likeness of God. Listen, I may have fallen short here and there, but according to that which is written of me in the volumes of the books of God, I will fulfill it until it's over. Are you listening? You must have this understanding. Joseph has to go through things that he did not even do. Things were said concerning him. Things were said about him. They lied about him. They talked about him. They plotted evil against him and all that. But all through that, the Bible says that, and the Lord was with him. That's all you ought to do. That is what you're going to, man, I love that. Through it all, the Lord was with him. Is the Lord with you? How sure are you that the Lord is with you if you cannot put yourself in this place for you to understand? Listen, it comes by understanding the fact this is where I will, you will always hear me mention the word understanding because I believe that is what Jesus, that is what God was saying through the prophet Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. God says, my people are destroyed for what they do not know. That knowledge there is understanding because if you don't have, one, listen, anything that you don't have understanding about will destroy you. It's either you abuse it and that thing will destroy you either. Why? Because you have no understanding about it. It's like a little child sees a flame of a fire. It, it looks so nice. He or she lacks the understanding that by trying to touch that thing, it's going to burn them. And so you, the older one, because you have understanding to know that when you touch that flame, it's going to burn you. You're not going to touch it. You see the difference? So the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, it says wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, you need to get wisdom. It's very, very important. 
It says, very essential for you to get wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Bible says that those who lack must ask for it. Ask God for wisdom. But in all that get it, you should get understanding. Why? Because if you don't have understanding of your being, you will be tossed through, I mean, left, right, center. Anything will just hit you and you will think that your life is a mistake. But I'm here this morning to let you know that you are not a mistake. God does not make mistake children. God does not make mistake children. God doesn't manufacture mistakes. If human beings don't manufacture mistakes, and even when they, 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 they realize, for example, like a, a car dealers, uh, the car company, they realize that, oh, they, they, there's something wrong with the, with the car that they manufacture. There's something they call recall. They recall it. But you are not a mistake. God took his time and created you and made you beautiful. David says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous, marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows that very well. You should come to the place where your soul knows this very well. That God created you marvelously, wonderfully. Are you listening? You are not a mistake. Whatever evil that men have plotted against you, you will come out of it. Listen, they don't have the last say. They do not have the last say. Who has the last say? Who has the last say? You answer that question. God is thinking about you. God has a plan for you. And he is bringing that plan to pass, whether they like it or not. There are times, there comes, listen, the plan of God, because it is not known to those enemies of yours, and even to yourself, the, 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 the complete plan of God, that is why you complain. That is why you want to throw in the towel. That is why you walk with your head down. But I want you to lift up your head, bring out your chest, and know that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Do you know who made you? Do you make yourself? So why are you troubling yourself? Because if you made yourself, then you will know how to fix it, right? You will know how to fix it. But because you are made by somebody, it's almost like that. See, that is why when your car breaks down, you go to the manufacturer, you go to the person who can fix it. There's somebody who created you. There's somebody who made you. There's somebody who has good plans for you. And he said, the plans that I have for you, they are plans of good and not evil. I will bring to pass that which I, listen, God's plans will come to pass. It will not, nobody can stop God for bringing his plan to pass. But I want you to know that by the end of the, of, of, of the tunnel, there is a greater reward. Look at that. The, the, I don't have much time today, but I'll, I'll speak with you more on this. But look at the, the life of some of these people that we read about. And like I said, the Bible is a manual for us to, to follow, to see that what we are living. Listen, what we are going through, others have already gone through. And so we take a cue out of the situation to know that somebody like Job, Job got to a place, Bible says like there was no perfect, no upright guy like Job. Yet the guy found himself in a place where he, he never expected. All kinds of things were said about him. All kinds of things were, were done. I mean, his friends and, and even his foolish wife. Man, I tell you, sometimes, man, let me not go there. <clears throat> anyway, I tell you. And so, <laughs> and so you see that when, when you are fulfilling the plan of God, People around you may not even understand. They would sometimes join forces with the enemies and to say and think all kinds of things about you. But listen, don't worry yourself. It is God who has the last say. All right? Well, let me leave you for now. I'll come back your way again. This is Reverend Quenu. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. But as long as you are in his will, he will bring you to that expected end. He says that the plans he has for you, they are plans of good and not evil to bring you to the expected end. There's an expectation of God concerning your life because he created you and he has a good plans for you. Many are the evil plans of men concerning you, but the manufacturer, the orchestrator, the one who, who created you and knows the number of your head, knows how you were formed, knows how you were, you were like a, a heartbeat in your mother's womb and somehow supernaturally orchestrated and, and made you into a being and be born by a woman. 
and therefore he knows what he has planned concerning you listen nothing can touch you without god's permission are you listening to me i said nothing can touch you without god's permission if god does not permit it will they will not and if god permits it listen it is for your good and not for your evil you you ought, you ought to begin to understand this that the plan of god first of all you are the handiwork of god david says he says that your 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 even your thoughts about me it blows my mind god he is thinking about you every day now why would he create you and then put you bring you forth go through all this all this uh, you know challenge all this time to just create you create you wonderfully and marvelously well bring you forth to this earth and not to, not to think about you what what was the meaning of all that if god doesn't have a good plan concerning you and so i want you to understand as you are listening to me begin to think that listen the way the only way satan can get you down is for you to to doubt your own identity as a child of god and i'm not talking about being being religious i'm talking about being spirit filled minded child of god for you to understand listen that is why god says that they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth god is not religious person so so put down or put some put it somewhere your form of godliness okay and just begin to think this way see god as a god of who created you and even know the number of your hair can anybody count the number of, of the hair on your head I always say this that anybody who can do that for me that person will be my god until then please just be quiet because you do not know my destiny you do not know my future you do not know what god has planned concern let me tell you something the 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 mother and the father who gave birth to you do not know your future or your destiny are you listening your destiny and your future belongs to god bible says that you you and i we have been inscribed in the palm of his hands and so it is he god who knows where you came from and where you are going again the journey men is not always a smooth journey somehow some way he he holds you even when you are going through the challenging and the rough times all you need to do is to pray for for him to sustain you i was sharing with this young man the other day is complaining and all that and i said listen there comes a time where god have to sustain you put you in a place where it's like you, you, this is not the place you want to be this is not the kind of food you want to eat this is not the environment you want to find yourself but god will put you there just to sustain you for a time and then move you on to your next level And so you must come to that place of understanding to know that God has not finished with you what you are going through right now is not the end of your story it may be the even the beginning of your story okay everybody is different God controls the Bible says that he controls the times and the season he knows what he has created and he knows the purpose of why he created you Let me tell you something. Again, your mother and your father on this earth do not know as my father they did not even request of you. Amen. And don't forget that they were born of somebody else too. But the originator of your life, the one who is the author and the finisher of your fate, he knows why he created you. He knows why he brought you to this place. He knows why you you know he has allowed you to go through what you are going through now. Listen, you need to study the Bible and then see those who have been where you are now and to know that if God brought them out of this situation, God is definitely going to bring you out of that situation as well. Because until God says it's over, ladies and gentlemen, it's not over yet. You know there's a song in in the, in 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 this uh, country um I hear it and I love it it says who has the last say I mean Jehovah what has the last say he would turn your life around he would turn your life around why because he has the upper hand he is the manufacturer 
of your being. He knows everything. Do you know that he created you so wonderfully, so beautifully that on the face of this 7.2 billion people on the face of the earth, you alone, you alone among all these people have your this fingerprint. Nobody has your fingerprint. Your fingerprint does not match anybody else. Isn't that amazing? Why do you think that the, 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 the government or the authorities, if you, you find yourself in trouble, they take your fingerprint? Why? Because they know that this is the avenue in which they can even track you wherever you are. God has made you a very special human being. And so whatever you, are, you find yourself going through, whatever you are going through, I want you to know that God has not finished with you. David says, even when I wake up in the morning, you are still on my mind. You are still thinking about me. Glory be to God. Man, I love this. For you to know that God is thinking about you, irrespective of whatever you are going through, God is still thinking about you. Now, you cannot go wrong by thinking that God is thinking about you and therefore this too shall pass. What is your problem? What are you going through? Yeah, there's so much going on right now. Everybody knows it. You do, you, listen, nobody needs to spell it out for you. You can see, feel, and touch yourself. But I want you to know and to renew your mind and begin to think this way according to that which God has created you for you to know that he who created you has a good plan and he will bring it to pass. Listen, when everything is going bad, does not mean that your life has come to a stop. Joseph had to go through and eventually became the vice, the vice president of even another person's nation, somebody's nation where he was not even a citizen. Are you listening to me? This is what God can do. Do you know the end of your story? Listen, no one knows the end of your story and therefore don't even, even, and that is why you have to be very, very careful about some of these places. Any time, I mean, when I see people running, running to places and, you know, in the name of this prophet and that prophet and that prophet and all that, it, it, it baffles me and, 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 and concerns me because why are you going to put yourself under somebody whom you do not, listen, I want you to, I'm not saying that the office of the prophet is not a good office, it's just been abused and be roughed up. However, you must understand that you are the number one person in the mind of God and God knows why you are going through what you are going through and he will bring you out. Listen, he will bring you out. Look at what Jesus said in the book of Mark chapter 8 and the, and the 10th the, and chapter 10. The, Jesus talked about, about the fact that he says, Peter, I remember Peter was saying to Jesus, Jesus, we have left everything to, to, to follow you, to worship you, to, to be with you. And, and, and Jesus re responded to Peter and said, Peter, let me tell you something. Nobody leaves husbands, wife, children, um, uh, a farm or land or houses or cars or business or whatever to follow me and not get a hundredfold return in this lifetime. Nobody, nobody. Therefore, if you have been following God and you have been serving God and you have been depending on him and you have been trusting him and you have been dedicating your life to him, I want you to know sincerely that Jesus says no one leaves anything to follow him and the gospel in this lifetime and not have a hundredfold return. And like, like I said, hundredfold return is hundred times hundred times hundred. That is the kind of investment you you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make. We believe your life has been blessed. Faith Moment with Reverend Patrick Quenu is brought to you by Patrick Quenu Ministries. For copies of this CD or any other messages, please call. There's a train coming. You don't need no baggage.